Today's discussion will be about COPD case. Uh, before we start, I would like to remind you with uh, like and subscribe to my channel so we can keep going together. Uh, as I promised you, there will be a, each uh, scenario. We will put an idiom in the beginning. So today's idiom is don't bite off more than what you can chew. This means you can read, 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 but you will not remember all what you read in the exam. So I need you to focus the points. You can read as much as you can, but put focused points or uh, memorizing points in, in a handout. That's what will you exactly remember in your exam. I had many questions in my exams, uh, which I wasn't able to answer when I went back to my books. I found I highlighted these points and I put how many marks. So again, don't bite off more than what you can chew. Focus and channel your energy. Uh, Today this is the case, uh, it's a 70 year old male patient, he came to pre-assessment anesthesia clinic uh, for right upper mass, uh, planned for uh, upper lobectomy, right upper lobectomy. He is a known case of hypertension, diabetes, uh, non-insulin dependent, and he is a smoker for around 40 years. Uh, he is chronic obstructive airway or pulmonary disease, COED or COPD. Uh, so he was he is on uh, Diamacron, Amlodipine, and Simvastatin plus Simpicort for his COPD exacerbations. Uh, now, the questions what we are going to discuss today. Uh, you, are, you will be examined in this case as a COPD plus some points in lobectomy. Uh, what is the definition of COPD? Again, definition and classification are the cornerstones in the management. Uh, subtypes of uh, COPD, which is not clinically important for us. Uh, assess severity, how you classify your patient or how you assess severity in your patient. Uh, what is the smoking index and is it relevant in our practice and in our management from an anesthesia point of view? Uh, what, are the, how, what are the findings in your examination? Uh, what are the clinical picture the patient may present with? Uh, and what you will focus on in your examination? How you will investigate this patient and know if he is fit for surgery or not? Uh, what are the intraoperative events or complications you are expecting with such patient? And how you are going to treat such complications focusing on the bronchospasm treatment? Uh, what is the plan for postoperative analgesia from uh, your point of view as an anesthetist? And uh, what are the postoperative complications you are expecting in this patient and how you are going to manage those complications? Now let's go for our discussion. So I need to hear from you in when you mention the definition of COPD. It's a chronic condition with an airflow limitations and uh, not fully reversible. And it would be very good if you mention that is the WHO definition in the beginning of your scenario. So as per WHO definition, it's a chronic airflow limitation which is not fully reversible. It was classified before as being puffers or blue blotters which is not relevant anymore, which is not followed anymore by WHO. Pink puffers and blue bloaters. Pink puffers are the emphysematous category and blue bloaters are the chronic bronchitis. And you know now there is three big uh, circles. One of them is uh, chronic emphysema, one is asthma, one is, uh, is chronic bronchitis. And these three circles are interlacing with each other or crossing over each other. So it's not of clinical importance for us. So that is the definition. Uh, how you are going to assess severity? I need, as an examiner, to hear from you the NICE guidelines or the GOLD uh, criteria for assessment of severity. What is the GOLD? It's the Global Initiative for Obstructive Lung Disease, GOLD, G-O-L-D. Uh, so what is this GOLD criteria? It's classifying severity is mild, moderate, severe, and very severe according to the FEV1 forced expiratory volume in the first second. So if EV1, if it is more than 80% or less than 80% down to 50%, from 50 to 30 and below 30 is very severe. So I'll put uh, the picture here as a reminder for you. You may say it's gold or nice criteria. Both are very similar to each other. We don't really care about the small differences between both of them. So gold was uh, created in 2008 and then each two years they are uh, improved. Uh, so the next question will be 
This patient is a smoker. Can you tell me about the smoking index? Smoking index is the number of packs of cigarettes per day. Here he is smoking multiplied by the number of years. So if he is smoking 10 cigarettes per day for like 20 years, so 10 cigarettes is half pack, so 0.5 multiplied by 20 years, so it will be 10. So his smoking index is 10 packs a year or one pack per day multiplied by 40 years so his smoking index would be 40 packs a year okay does it correlate really with our clinical management for a COPD patient no in our practice it's not useful but it correlates with the incidence of non-small lung cancer so it's it's not relevant in our practice that's why we don't hear about it much but again it will give you an idea the higher the severity uh, of smoking and the higher the packs per year index, the more complications you are expecting in this patient. But we are more concerned with the gold or nice criteria for assessing the severity. My next question will be how you are going to assess your patient clinically? Then please classify or die, remember the rule. Don't tell me, okay, auscultation, then uh, inspection, palpation. Don't, don't say like that. Okay, I'm searching for respiratory. Uh, manifestations, I'm searching for cardiac manifestations and other manifestations. C respiratory manifestation, diminished air entry, bronchospasm, atelectric finds, findings like diminished air entry on the lung basis, uh, pneumonia, local uh, because COPD is accompanied by high incidence of uh, non-small lung cancer so it may be localized diminished air entry so you have to examine the thorax in six areas in front and six areas in the back, upper, middle, lower, right and left anterior and posterior or front and back and then you may find any wheezy chest that means the patient has active bronchospasm in the moment he is coming to you in the clinical he may have a pneumonia so refer him back to the GP to uh, optimize his condition before he goes to theater so that's from the respiratory point of view cardiac chronic obstructive airway disease has a reflection on the right heart patient right heart of the patient how we will find the engorged neck veins right tenderness in the right hypochondrium, which means uh, congested liver, lower limb edema, and other manifestations of pulmonary hypertension. And we have a case of pulmonary hypertension. We'll discuss all that in details. Okay, then what are the other manifestations? This patient may have uh, thrombocytosis, may have polycythemia, may have leukocytosis uh, in his... Uh, his so what are the other manifestations in this case? Uh, you know these patients are polycythemic, so they may have hypercoagulable state, what you know about the Virchow or Virchow's triad, uh, so high incidence of deep vein thrombosis and other manifestations. You may find, if it's chronic condition like that, you may find finger clopping, uh, cyanosis, other systemic manifestations. This is roughly the examination and what you will find. Be focused. Okay, it's just a point in the exam, you have to be focused and give your answer systematic, so respiratory, cardiac, and others. Then, what are the investigations? Please, when you are mentioning any investigation, try to find a rationale for this one and mention that immediately. So I'm asking for a full blood count, not as routine, because I may find polycythemia, I may find leukocytosis, I may find thrombocytosis. I will ask for U and E. What is the rationale for U and E? This patient in Symbicort, that's a kind of cortisone, so if you may find hypokalemia, so you need to optimize that preoperatively. You may find this patient sometimes on diuretics, it's right side heart failure, so he may be another cause of hypokalemia. So please be focused and justify each of the investigations you're asking. Okay, then what other investigation? For sure you will ask for a chest X-ray and arterial blood gases. All pulmonologists ask for, for stable patients for an arterial blood gas on room air to assess severity and possible complications and respiratory failure after that. What are the criteria expecting worse or poor outcome in this patient if you do arterial blood gases on room air and PO2 is less than 7.9 or PCO2 is more than 5.9 that really carries a poor prognosis of the patient that says that this patient is really severe condition okay so uh, you will ask for an arterial blood gases and chest x-ray what you're expecting in the chest x-ray see this chest x-ray in front of you now and you will find that there is emphysematous findings area between the ribs are increasing, 
you are counting more reps because of emphysema because the diaphragm is pushed down so more than 9 to 10 reps which is normal now it will be like 10 to 11 reps uh, counted on each side and you will find right strain pattern right heart side strain pattern so the right atrial enlargement right ventricular enlargement you can see that in the chest x-ray what else okay 12 lead ECG what you will find that 12 lead ECG I'm showing you now one ECG lead showing a P pulmonal which is the sign of pulmonary hypertension in the ECG you may find right axis deviation right ventricular strain pattern find the right bundle branch block so you may find in the ECG a right band bundle branch block whatever so you have to know what the investigation you're asking and what it represents okay now you ask it for those investigation what is the last investigation you will mention pulmonary function test you should be fully understanding the pulmonary function test how it presents I spent a lot of time to understand the pulmonary function test follow me in this graph in front of you now and I will explain for you how to read that three steps to read your very simple three steps to read your pulmonary function test if if you want divided by force divided capacity if it is low that means there is an obstructive pattern if it is normal or high so look at the restrictive pattern which will you look you will look at total lung capacity after that so total lung capacity if it is high or low again if it's low that means restrictive pulmonary disease then you will have a look on the DLCO which is a diffusion capacity of carbon monoxide this is the three steps to make it simple for you whenever you look at the pulmonary function test so if if you want divided by FVC if it is uh, low below 80% that means obstructive pattern if you find the TLC is low that means there is a restrictive pattern so there is a mix of pathology in this patient and if 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 you want for the vital capacity is normal or high and just reduced total lung capacity that means it is just restrictive lung disease then have a look on the DLCO if DLCO is impaired in presence of normal TLC normal FEV1 that means it's an interstitial pulmonary disease like a pulmonary edema or whatever okay so this is the three simple steps to read a pulmonary function test okay now what are the intraoperative problems you're expecting in this patient again classify you will say pulmonary and cardiac the pulmonary I'm expecting hypoxemia I'm expecting bronchospasm I'm expecting atelectasis I'm expecting pneumothorax if this patient has some bully before the uh, problems with uh, one lung ventilation because I'm expecting you to know that this patient will sleep as one lung ventilation strategy okay cardiac what are the cardiac again hypoxia causes the pulmonary uh, causes pulmonary hypertension with right ventricular strain and right ventricular failure and it's sequelae okay now the next question you have a patient who has developed uh, bronchospasm under anesthesia how you are going to treat that again classify number one you put this patient on 100% FIU2 don't forget that second point pharmacological treatment by anesthetics and non-anesthetics by anesthetics, okay, I'll deepen the anesthesia using my inhalational anesthetics like sevoflurane. Uh, uh, I'll give him IV anesthetics like propofol. You may use ketamine as a bronchodilator. You may use lidocaine as, a, as an IV and non-anesthetic uh, medications. You will give puffs of salbutamol. What is the dose? Five milligram uh, nebulization could be used frequent, or you can use the puff uh, used in inhalers. Uh, you have it in, in the drawers all the time so ventolin nebulizations or ventolin buffs then ipratrobium bromide magnesium sulfate and then you can use adrenaline any other treatments you can use yes I can use helium enriched oxygen okay you have to know the mechanism of action of each of these drugs uh, examination question so what's the treatment what's, it, what's the mechanism of action of ipratrobium bromide it's an anti-acetylcholine okay what is the mechanism of action of salbutamol? It's a beta-2 agonist. What's the mechanism of action of magnesium sulfate? It is antidote of calcium. So when you use magnesium, use it as bronchodilator by its mechanism of action as an antidote for the calcium. Then, why you use helium enriched oxygen? If you remember the uh, Reynolds number, the Reynolds number is uh, a multiplication of the density multiplied by the velocity multiplied uh, by the diameter of the tube being divided by the viscosity okay so now 
in if this number is above 2000 that means a turbulent flow and more bronchospasm and less uh, delivery of oxygen to the distal airways and alveoli and if it's below uh, 2000 so uh, the number the lower the number the better the oxygenation so now when you use helium enriched oxygen you use lower density so when you use lower density you can irrigate the alveoli more efficiently as per Reynolds number okay so what is the next question what what's your plan for post operative analgesia for this patient you will avoid or try to avoid the PCA and morphine because it causes more respiratory depression and more prone to post operative mechanical ventilation so use the regional techniques as much as you can uh, so I will say okay I will put thoracic epidural catheter for this patient or I will do paravertebral block as a single shot or as a single shot plus a catheter after that okay so now this patient is expected for post or complication and you have to prevent that or put a plan for that what are these complications again because these patients are polycythemic so you have to put a uh, high elastic stocking and use DVT prophylaxis as early as possible number two the high incidence of pneumonia in this patient so again you have to keep your eye on the uh, peep on this patient to put low peep for this patient uh, to prevent atelectasis and pneumonia uh, and give antibiotic prophylaxis as per procedure okay now the last question in this session this patient is going for right upper lobectomy are you expecting this patient to have ICU admission postoperatively and postoperative mechanical ventilation or not so this depends on FEV1 uh, that the patient has in his pulmonary function test initially and how much is going to be removed from his lung in intraoperative period now what does this mean so if I'm planning to do right upper lobectomy both lung loops has 19 segment according to the British Thoracic Society this uh, 19 uh, segments in two lungs 10 on the right side and 9 on the left side if you are going to do right upper lobectomy you are removing three segments because the upper lobe contains three, three segments so divide the lung segments after you reduce these segments which is 19 minus 3 so it will be 16 lung segments you will divide that by 19 segment and then multiply that by FEV1 preoperatively then you will get the post-operative FEV1 if this is more than 40 percent you can proceed for surgery if this less than 40 percent you need further investigations to say this patient needs a post-operative mechanical ventilation or not and he may be very high risk for surgery also so it could be a simple surgery it could be very difficult surgery and requires post-operative ventilation and ICU admission okay I presume we covered the whole topic of COPD and I'm waiting for your questions and comments Please don't forget to subscribe in my channel and press like if you have a YouTube account. Thanks very much.